Even with no Gigantamax option anymore, Dreadnought can still get up to some shenanigans. It's currently the only playable water rock type in the game, and with its solid base 115 attack, this thing can be more useful than its extremely low usage stat suggests. It can run either Swift Swim to be fast as hell in rain, or Strong Jaw to boost bite based attacks by 50%. So the real saving grace for our turtle fella is obviously Shell Smash. With an immediate plus two to both speed and attack, it becomes faster than basically everything even without Swift Swim, allowing the use of Strong Jaw and Terra Dark for Crunch to bust a hole in just about everything also. Stab options in Liquidation, along with Stone Edge, are not fun to be on the receiving end of, and moral of the story, Dreadnought is a snapping turtle that will in fact snap some necks. Here's a fun fact for you, Dreadnought is actually not based off of a turtle, it's based off of a button, and when you press that button, you win the game, and that's just the facts. For real though, as little as this thing is used, it's insanely good, and always provides really good value, and I love me some Dreadnought. If you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button, I'm working on getting to 400,000 subs, and you can help me out. Also, so I don't do this often, but I actually just designed and released some new merch. I'm really happy with how this one came out, I basically just made this because I wanted to rep the carp myself. If you're interested in helping out the dream of me being able to do YouTube full time and also just look fresh as hell in the process, go to the link in the description or just hateun.com and take a look. And with that, let's get into the match. Alright, so as my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead on for the Torkoal, obviously they're working with a Sun team and that's just always scary because very hyper offensive and they have a lot of threats. So, I decided to lead off with the Tornadus, mostly just because I can actually just go for a Rain Dance here. I'm Basically, this Tornadus is here to enable Dreadnought, and uh, it's also going to work really well here with that Prankster to basically turn off their sun whenever I want to. So, I go for that Rain Dance turn 1, it is going to switch it over to the rain. I'm like, I like it moist out here, and they actually go for the Yawn, which is kind of fine. I'm just going to U-turn out here regardless. I imagine they do switch out because they can just bring that Torkoal back in, potentially set up Drought, and it's going to be a little Weather War situation. So... As they actually end up pivoting into the Galvantula, that's going to be a bit interesting because first of all, I can go for the U-turn which is going to break a potential Focus Ash, which is great. And now I realize that while I've got the rain on my side, or at least just have a bit of momentum, I can actually go right into the Dreadnought. And so there's a couple different kind of interesting points here. So first of all, I don't have any hazard control on this team. Now, I imagine they probably want to set up their Sticky Web turn 1, and also they have the super effective hit. I, just with either like an energy ball or even just a uh, thunder or thunder. So as I go for the Terra Dark, that's just to ensure that I can guarantee that I take you know any attack, barring if they predicted that and go for a Bug Buzz for some reason. But also I can then set up a Shell Smash before they get their Sticky Web up and come in and don't have to worry about touching it. So they do go for that Sticky Web, which is fine. I know that one way around that is Sticky Web paired with going against the Sun Team is extremely scary. And I gotta go full offensive to start and try to get things rolling early. So I get that Shell Smash off, which is amazing. Gonna go ahead and double our attack and speed. And basically just like that, Dreadnought is wildly scary, especially in the rain. We are looking real nice. So I get that White Herb, which gets rid of the defensive drop. And at this point, I'm just gonna go for a nice little Strong Jaw Stab Boosted Crunch. And that's just gonna straight up take care of the Galvantula because he didn't have his Focus Ash intact from the U-turn. So that is really nice for me. And as they go into the Torkoal, they obviously just want to turn off the rain, and that's kind of fine. Now, Torkoal is a pretty defensive turtle himself, but at this point, look, my shell is already smashed as hell. Plus, I am able to connect on a nice little stab, <laughs> super effective Stone Edge, which is going to be able to take care of the Torkoal. Now, I get a crit, which actually does not matter, because even if that thing was bold, max HP and defense, it is a 100% chance to kill there. So, that takes care of the Torkoal, which is amazing. And now, we're just going on an absolute rampage. Sometimes, you just get the early initiative, and we're out here rolling. So, they go into the Typhlosion here, and uh, they're probably just like, well, I mean, at least... They can dampen my liquidation with the sun. So they go for the Terra Fire just to boost up some potential damage if they're able to get anything off. That allows me to then just go for that nice little boosted crunch. And uh, yeah, that, take a nice little bite out of him. That's going to take care of the Typhlosion. And uh, Buddy's got no chance of living that. So they actually realize that, yeah, the Dreadnought has, has gotten too far. He's in too deep and they just, they're just going to head out. So... <laughs> That just goes to show this thing is not to be messed with. And with that, that's going to bring us into the next game because that one just doesn't count. So once again, our opponent's working with a team full of threats, but we are not afraid because we have the, the freaking the jaw turtle. And let's get into it. So this time, my guy's just going to go ahead and lead off with the Landorus, who is always just standing there menacingly. And I have an orb. And 
Fortress as a lead here is a little bit of bait, right? Because I know that they have the Hatterene in the back, and I also know that little fella wants to switch in and bounce my hazards back at me. So, as I expect, they're going to go for the U-turn here, and I'm fully expecting the freaking Wizard to come in. Who's going to get Volt Twitched, and then I can try to grab myself uh, an early matchup and try to get things rolling. So they do bring in old Pointy Hat over here, and I'm like, yeah, I'm actually going to head out. It will not catch me getting Magic Bounce today. And I have a couple different options on who I might want to bring in here. Now, I realize Entei is good at a few things, but one thing is that nothing wants to switch into a Choice Banded Sacred Fire. So I'm actually in a really good position here for uh, Sacred Fire to, first of all, do a bunch of damage to stuff, and then also... 50% burn chance is always just super nice. So I'm going to go right for that Sacred Fire. They decide they do not want that thing to get burnt to a damn crisp. And they actually decide to bring in Landorus, which is great because most people will be like, I'm just going to intimidate this thing beyond my way. But I'm focused in an inner fashion and we cannot be intimidated, which is fantastic. Sacred Fire not only does a whole bunch of damage, but also gets the burn, which is great because now this thing has to take that burn chip and the next turn it dies. So I'm like, that actually... It was a perfect sequence for Entei showing off Regan Inner Focus doing stuff. And at this point, I decided I'm actually just going to go right back into the fortress here. Um, just to kind of you know, either tank an attack or let him set up the rocks. I can either rapid spin him away. And then just kind of use fortress as a little punching bag here. So instead, they actually decide to go for the earthquake, which basically heals the guy. And I'm like, that's fine. This is fine. So now all we got to do is play the old waiting game. The burn is going to do its thing. Takes care of the Landorus, which is actually really nice because that thing is quick. It, it pivots. It potentially sets up rocks and intimidates and annoying. So Landorus going down is a huge win at the cost of basically nothing. Now with the empty battlefield, or at least they have the free switch, they decide to go into Claude Sire. And I, at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident that I can just set up the stealth rock here. They're not going to go into the hat. And that's, I imagine they probably set up rocks of their own, which I'm also not really worried about because then Fortress can just rapid spin them away. But instead, they actually go for the Toxic Spikes. So um, that's going to be a bit annoying. I don't have a Grounded Poison, but I do have a couple different spinners. So I'm kind of fine with this thing wasting turns here, just setting up. And while Fortress can't really do anything in this matchup, it's actually not bad for me because I can either set up some more hazards of my own. I can also show them that I can just spin theirs away. So that's what I'm going to go for here. Uh, it does give me, you know, get rid of the toxic spikes, which is nice, but they just go ahead and lay down another layer. But he wants to get that freaking bad poison, which is annoying, so it's going to stick around. But obviously, it's kind of a get-nowhere matchup. I am just going to basically be healed back to full from the leftovers. And having Walnut healthy is always a good time. I could actually also get myself to a point where I will get sturdy reactive if I get all the way to full. But as I'm looking at it here, we're a couple of round fellas that are going to get basically nowhere in this matchup. So I decide, instead of staying in here and just going for another rapid spin, I actually have the Excadrill on the squad who has a way better matchup and can also spin away those spikes. So I'm going to bring in the Excadrill here who also isn't worried about a ground move because I all, I'm air balloon and I'm just floating above it because it's Drillbert's freaking birthday. So as they bring the drill in, I imagine they probably just go for another layer of spikes or just kind of scout what I'm going to go for. I am floating in the air, which is great, but they actually end up switching themselves and they probably realize they're not going to be able to do much to the fortress. And now we got ourselves a little, little blind date action where we both switch and we're like, oh shit, did not, you don't look anything like your picture and now I'm scared. So. Dragapult is bad. I don't really like this matchup, so I decide I'm going to go ahead and swap out here. I'm going to bring back in the Fortress because, again, if there's one thing Fortress is good at, it's just being a punching bag. So as I bring it in, I actually end up getting hit by a Fire Blast. And that has got to be the worst thing to see as a Fortress just randomly switching in. You're like, oh, beautiful day here. I'm just going to come in and then boom, four times super effective roasted over a damn fire. And <laughs> down goes my freaking nuts. So at least one thing is good. I can bring in the Entei. I basically unscathed at this point. And while I do get poisoned, the single poison isn't that big of a deal here. Now, I know that I can take any attack that Dragapult wants to throw at me. So I decide I'm actually just going to go for the crunch. On the chance that they potentially want to stay in here, as much as I want to go for a Sacred Fire, it's just not going to be beneficial, at least on that matchup. So I got to try to take as much advantage as possible. I decide to go for the crunch. But they're actually going to end up switching into a freaking Cinderace. And Pyro Butt comes in. Does take some Stealth Rock chips. We know it's not going to be Heavy Duty Boots, which is nice. And I also would really prefer this thing doesn't Court Change. I was kind of reluctant to set up Stealth Rock for that. Um, but also, if he wants to Court Change, I can just freely switch in the Tornadus before that ends up happening. Also, Tornadus should just be able to take you know, anything this thing wants to throw at me. And the Tornadus is here <laughs> to basically you know, be able to enable the rest of the squad. So they actually end up going for the Sucker Punch, which is great because I come in for free. I got my arms crossed, like, pathetic. And now, 
I'm actually able to go for that Rain Dance. So they actually, they're going to switch because Cinderace doesn't enjoy the matchup. And they actually decide uh, to bring back in freaking Dragapult, who is quite scary. Again, with this ghostly little tail over here, this thing is just always a massive threat. But at least I'm able to set up my Rain Dance, uh, which is going to stick around and just enable freaking potentially the Dreadnought in the back. So they go for the Thunderbolt here. It does, of course, have that T-Bolt coverage. Just straight up wipes me out, which is fine because I kind of... Don't really mind being able to just bring in Dreadnought now, essentially, for free. So, I guess not free. The cost of Tornado is going down. I set up my rain to just boost up some liquidations. Also, running like the kind of bluff of like being um, not only Shell Smash, but also Swift Swim. I like thinking they're, I'm going to be faster is also pretty great. So, I come in. I do get Poison, which is annoying, but at this point... I know obviously they have that flame or the thunderbolt, so I'm actually gonna end up going for the Terra Dark just to be able to uh, guarantee that I can take that if that's what they want to do. But they actually end up switching, and they're gonna go into the Clod Sire. So this Poop Sire looking fella is actually it's a weird matchup with the Dreadnought. First of all, it could be unaware, which is going to negate my stat boost with the Shell Smash, which obviously I'm going Shell Smash in here, but also. Its secondary ability option in Water Absorb could just be bad also in that getting rid of its weakness to a liquidation. So as I go for that Terra Dark, I bust out the Shell Smash, of course, which is going to go ahead and double that attack and speed. Notably, it's going to make me faster than the Dragapult in the back. And honestly, Dreadnought, extremely scary. Not only does the Terra Dark boost up my crunches, but also it's going to help me out a lot defensively versus things like potentially Sucker Punch King Gambit in the back. And also, I got myself a decision to make here, right? Because uh, Clod Sire can be unaware, it can be water absorbs. It's kind of a coin flip here. I, I figure, you know, since they switched it in from that Dragapult matchup, they weren't really expecting a liquidation. So it's like, I'm thinking maybe they're going to be unaware here. And I'm going to roll the dice, go for that liquidation instead. Yeah, they are just water absorbs. So <laughs> I heal the guy. But I figured, hey, the payoff would have been actually insane had it have been a, an unaware one. So it doesn't end up working out. The, it's fine because I can take an attack no problem uh, especially with that white herb my defense is just back to neutral now knowing that it's water absorb it's not unaware so I get the benefit of my stat boost and now I can just go for that big old boy crunch and with that terra boost actually just straight up takes care of it so that is amazing down goes the Claude Sire uh, great defensive pivot option for them and now Shellzilla is going on a little uh, little Godzilla rampage here where we get to see kind of what their answer is going to be so First of all, they decide to bring in the Cinderace, who I'm thinking may have been Choice Scarf, but as it comes in, just dies to the rocks. And so I'm like, hey, that was actually pretty solid. So <laughs> down goes the Cinderace, um, and now they're actually going to go into freaking Hatterene. So this thing gets to see how much he likes the freaking Dreadnought with a Shell Smash and a Liquidation Boost in the rain. It is, I tell you what, it's not going to end up well for him. So obviously I outspeed, and obviously that's going to take care of it. They might have wanted to set up like a Trick Room. I don't know what Buddy was working with. Trying to let him cook on the freaking the hat there, but it takes care of it easy And as I am taking some continuous poison chip at least we've gotten to the point where we have busted a nice little hole in the squad here So now they decide to go King Gambit and with Supreme Overlord the main thought here is obviously just sucker punch is unfortunate And I'm just gonna go down to that running out of assets here I decide I'm actually just gonna go for that liquidation if they want a sucker punch I'm just gonna let that let that happen. So they actually are gonna end up busting out the Terra Gonna go for that Terra Dark, which actually doesn't end up changing up the matchup here really at all. And I am in range to where a Sucker Punch yeah, should just be able to take care of me. But they actually don't go for it. I'm able to bust out the Liquidation and outspeed, taking care of the King Gambit. They probably, I assume, went for a Swords Dance here. Playing kind of on the back foot, playing from behind, I imagine they probably tried to set up a Swords Dance. Basically, if I predicted the Sucker Punch, that kind of seals the game for them had they been able to get up a Swords Dance. That's what I imagine the play was there, but Dreadnought just is able to clutch it out. And even now their final mon being the Dragapult comes in here, and now I get to show off the fact that I am in fact faster and uh, a crunch. Especially with that boost and everything, it's just going to kill like four of those guys. So that takes care of the Dragapult, and once again, once Dreadnought gets going, this thing... It's freaking out of control and not the guy you want to piss off. So that's going to do it for that game. And guess what? If you've made it this far into the match, I've got a little bonus game action for you. And all you got to do is just hit that like button to appease Daddy YouTube and help out the channel in the process. And with that, let's go ahead and get into it. So this time, my opponent's going to go ahead and lead off with the Garganackle. Now, this is a big salty fella that makes me a big salty fella. I, one of the top things I hate playing against, but... I got myself the Fortress, and I'm just going to lay down my Stealth Rock. I figure they're just here to set up some Rock also, and uh, I'm mostly just kind of hoping this thing isn't going to be Iron Defense Body Press. So, 
Turns out, turn one, they're gonna go for the rock slide. Thank God they do not get the flinch. But also, my sturdy is now broken, which is just annoying, but doesn't hurt that bad anyway. And I'm just over here just taking a nice little bite out of my leftover apple. So, looking at the team they're working with, one thing I notice is they do not have any hazard control, which is great. I'm just rubbing my little fortress hands together, excited to set up some spikes because that's gonna make uh, my life a whole lot easier. Because one thing is for certain, we love punishing some switches. So, uh, I set up them spikes, make some, scatter some Legos around that you do not want to walk around on barefoot. And at this point, I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch. They're not getting anywhere with just going for Rock Slides. They actually end up going for the Salt Cure here. I kind of thought maybe they would switch out, but also, it, this is fine. I get Salt Cured, nothing like a nice little, little Salt Cured Walnut for breakfast. But I go for the Volt Switch, getting rid of that, but also now, allow me to go into whatever I want. So, I have a couple different options. I actually decide... I'm gonna go into Excadrill here. I have the option to potentially start setting up Swords Dances. And if I do get a Rapid Spin off as well with a Speed Boost, Excadrill looks real good against their team, especially uh, with the SD Boost. So that is the plan. I also am Air Balloon, so you know I cannot be hit by a ground move here. So it's kind of just a free, as free SD here, as uh, they actually are gonna end up going for that Salt Cure once again, which is annoying because I always forget just how much continually damage this does, especially to freaking Excadrill. So, doesn't do much initially, but uh, pops my air balloon, which is annoying. And then now, I'm taking a big old chunk every turn. So, Excadrill is here to party for at least a little bit of time, and I'm just going to go right for a nice little earthquake. And they actually end up staying in here, so that's going to end up taking care of the guard. Now, that is solid for me because that thing, once again, is just annoying. I do get a crit, don't believe it mattered, stonks. So they had nothing that really wants to hard switch into Excadrill, especially after a Swords Dance, but I was really, if I was able to set up a Rapid Spin, this thing would have been much better. But now, as they're able to switch into Typhlosion here, this thing is going to be able to outspeed, and also Typhlosion is spooky, and I cannot Rapid Spin against it. So it does take a whole bunch from the Hazard, which is always nice, but I decide I'm going to switch right into the Tornadoes here, because first of all, one of the ways that I try to enable Dreadnought is to be able to pivot it into things that I know I can set up against. And honestly, this Typhlosion's looking pretty nice. Plus, that Dreadnought endgame looks pretty free here. So, they go for the Flamethrower. I'm now just going to go for that Rain Dance. I am Prankster. I'm guaranteed to be able to set it up. And uh, also, the good news is it is going to dampen that fire damage. So, as they go for another Flamethrower here, I actually am barely able to live, which is nice. So, here's the thing. I can now go for the Weather Ball to just take this thing out. However... I'm actually going to go for the U-turn instead. That's because while the short game knocking out Typhlosion is nice, the long game is much more beneficial in being able to bring in Dreadnought against a Typhlosion who I suspect is probably Choice Scarfed into Flamethrower. So I'm going to bring in the Shellzilla and we're just ready to rampage across the damn beach here. So they go for that extra Flamethrower. It's not going to do anything because it's resisted and in the rain. And I'm like, this is a free Shell Smash here. Never been more free. I turned myself into a Clam for some reason and now we just bust our Shell up which is making Dreadnought extremely scary. We're now faster than everything. We hit extremely hard, especially with liquidation boosts and friggin' strong jaw crunches. And we're out here just going quick. Also, gotta shout out the, the texture of the shell. Looks amazing on this thing. So, uh, they actually end up going for a focus miss, which of course, focus misses. I totally thought this thing was choiced and the focus blast scared the hell out of me, but we actually get the lucky miss there, which is horrible for them and great for us. So now with our newfound extra breath of life, we can go for the liquidation to finish off the Typhlosion. And that is just this is bad luck. But hey, clicking Focus Blast is what's going to happen sometimes. So now they can go into whatever they like. They decide they're going to bring in Annihilate. Now this is an angry fellow who's generally pretty bulky and also scary. Does take a whole bunch from the hazards, however. And I also now am just doubled attack and the liquidation stab boosted in the rain. It's just going to straight up turn the pig into a nice little roast. So that takes care of a very big threat. Annihilate, always very scary to go up against. And uh, now we are working with a couple of different things that can resist. So first of all, they got the Hisuian Samurott, but he's looking small over there and also looking like his feet hurt because he touched the spike. So, I just decide I'm going to go for that liquidation anyway. It turns out after a Shell Smash and in the rain, that's just going to be, it's going to take care of it. We don't even care if you have resist. It just doesn't matter. So, now they're trying Tinkaton. This thing, you know, big ol' hammer is you know, kind of a, a bulky fellow, mostly on the special side. But, again, Dreadnought eats hammers for breakfast, lunch and dinner on certain occasions. So I'm just going to go for that liquidation. They don't have the defensive Terra, and we're just out here just obliterating stuff. And once you get the, once you get the Dreadnought to smash, smash the shell, it's, uh, it hurts. And sometimes you got to find that out the hard way. So they do actually have the Meowskarada, who um, can only outspeed if it's Choice Scarf here. And I also have a resisted liquidation, but it's like, you know what? I'm going to actually end up busting out the Terra Dark 
just on the off chance that uh, they can end up either A, taking an attack, or it's going to be somehow scarfing faster. I'm going to go for that Terra Dark, because Dreadnought just likes being a dark fella, and also freaking boosted crunches with Strong Jaw. It's going to do similar damage to a boosted liquidation in the rain anyway. Actually, it's better call to just go for the liquidation here, but since I clicked the Dark Terra anyway, I'm like, screw it, I'm just going to kill it with Crunch regardless. So, they actually end up busting out a Terra of their own. They're going to go for the Terra Grass uh, to try to give themselves a chance for maybe a Flower Trick to do something if it can somehow somehow get out of this shit alive. But it turns out, yeah, we just take a nice little... You see that flower? Delicious. We love flowers. That's a nice little appetizer for us at the end of the battle. So that's going to take care of the Miascarada. And that's also going to be the end of the match. So Dreadnought fun and also scary. And uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.